Later, Quantum. <laughs> Got him. I'm gonna bury you, Christian. <laughs> I am taking you to witness how others before you have responded to persecution in a godly way. Chris Quantum's a Christian, huh? All the central vitamins <laughs> and... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> hey, Carla! What's wrong with you guys? Forgive me? Good. Because that's real Christian of you. Now stay out of my way today, Bible Good. boy. <laughs> Dear Lord, Please give me the strength and wisdom not to get out of this problem today. With through it, allow me the strength to continue to spread your word. Amen. They haven't missed a single one. I never That's missed one that missed shot. shot for Kane Tate. That's what? two missed shots. What's happening, Kane? Kane Tate can't afford to miss another shot, or he won't get eight balls into the net. It's nothing, Kane. You got this. Yeah, I do. Oh, too bad. Kane Tate has no shots left and only seven balls in the net. You got robbed, man. Chris Quantum already has nine balls in the net and one shot to go. Hey, Kane! What are you doing, Quantum? Rules say you need to shoot eight balls into the net. They don't say which balls those have to be. Let's check the league rules. Hmm. Looks like he's right. There is no rule against it. Why'd you do that? I already scored the shots I needed. Besides, Jesus says in Luke, do to others as you would like them to do to you. Uh, Luke? It's in the Bible. <laughs> you made it, dude! Yeah. Before we dig into the delicious pizzas, who wants to lead prayer to thank God for all the blessings he gave us today? I do. And I'd like us to please pray for Cain Tate as well. I was able to talk to him about Jesus today. Father, thank you for your many blessings today, for watching over everyone at the soccer tryouts and for bringing us all safely home again. We especially want to thank you for your constant love, and we pray those who don't yet know you might come to know you through our example. Help us to be good examples for you, Lord. Amen. Dear friend, let me share with you about what if people don't believe I am who God says I am in the Bible. Stephen knew his identity was in Christ. He endured the lies and accusations to stand firm in his commandments to Christ. In this world, we will have people question our faith and even the reality of God and Christ. No matter what we read on the internet, television or any form of media, no matter what we are taught in school or what our friends may say, our identity is found in Christ Jesus, not in the world. Galatians chapter 3 verse 26 says, For you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Yes, dear friends, we are God's children. There is no doubt about it. It would be wise to hide this verse in our hearts and repeat it to ourselves every day. Jesus said in John chapter 15 verse 19, This world would love you as one as of its own if you belonged to it, but you, no, but you are no longer part of the world. I chose you to come out of the world, so it hates you. We are in this world, but not of it. Our identity does not come from what we do or who people say we are. We must be prepared for rejection and insults. If Jesus faced these things, so will we. He came to his people, Christ Jesus came to his own people 
and even they rejected him. John chapter 1 verse 1 through 12. It is our choice to believe what God says or what the world may say. We are God's children and nothing we do or face can change that. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean He no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? No, my dear friend. God is always there to help us and He has been helping all of us no matter how we are living in this world. Dear friend, I hope you are encouraged by the life lesson we can learn from the Bible event present in Superbook episode, Law of Your Enemies. Dear friends, you can read in the Bible about the things I just said in Romans chapter 8, Galatians chapter 3 and be encouraged by going through the living word of God. Now today I'd like to present you the second and third century heresy teachings under our study of Christology. And in our previous episode, we have already learned about introduction of Christology, four significant aspects of Christian theology, doctrine of Trinity, early five major churches, the first century heresy teachings. And today we are going to learn about or see about the second and third century heresy teachings. The second and third century heresy teachings. Dear friends, we have already known that heresy teachings were rooted in churches in the first century. The first century passed away, but the heresy did not end, rather new and the different heresies commenced in the second and third centuries. Some of the heresies teachings of that time are as follows. Number 1. Gnosticism. This doctrine totally denies the humanity of Jesus Christ. They believe that Jesus had never dwelt in this world with human form, but he only dwelt in spirit form. Number 2. Montanism This doctrine was brought at the end of 2nd century. According to this doctrine, no Paracletus was come to the upper room. They believe that promise was only for that time but not for today, and Jesus would come in that meantime of 2nd century. They started to teach that prophecies of Joel would fulfill in their time. These two heresies teachings spread in those early five churches. Those five churches had no actual doctrine of Jesus Christ. Therefore, they could not face those heresy teachings. To defend from those heresy teachings, the western churches, Antioch, Constantinople and Rome, appointed two Bible scholars to find out right theory and teach in those churches. Their names are Uranius and number two, Tertullian. Uranius was living in 115 AD and Tertullian was living in 150 AD. At the same time, the Eastern churches, Jerusalem and Alexandria appointed two Bible scholars to defend those heresies, teaching and teach right theory in the churches. Their names are Clement 150 AD and Oregon 180 AD. Those Western and Eastern Bible scholars had a special meeting at Alexandria of Egypt 1800 years before. They combined their ideas together to fight against Gnosticism and Monotheism. They developed new doctrine. They also developed the Apostles' Creed. Creed was taken out from Latin word Credo, which means I believe. That creed had significant belief of those believers. Dear friends, this all I'd like to share with you about the second and third century heresy teachings. Now let me share with you about the fourth century heresy teachings. Fourth century was the turning point in Christian history with many changes. At that period, three major heresy teachings started which caused big problem in early churches. Those heresy teachings had different doctrines of Trinity and Christology or Christology. Early five churches did not have good relationship with each other. Nevertheless, they came together to fight against those heresies. Heresies of the 4th century were as follows. Number 1. Arianism. This doctrine or 
Arianism doctrine was developed by a famous scholar Arius 270-330 AD. He was a much respected person in Bauchilis Church. That church was daughter church of Alexandria Church. He developed a new idea of Christology. He said, Father God and Son God are two different gods. So, according to him, there should be two gods. He believed that Jesus is the first and highest being in the creation and Jesus was not existed from the eternity. He denied the deity of Jesus Christ. At that time, there was a famous and great bishop in Alexandria Church whose name was Athanius, 296-373 AD. He called himself descendant of St. Mark. He was very upset with Arius. He was very upset with Arius doctrine. Those heresy teachings of Arius spread to the early five churches. In the meantime, those churches always had debate in a doctrine of Arius and Athanasius. Number 2. Pelagianism. Pelagianism. This doctrine was developed by a scholar Pelagius. We don't know about the date of his birth and death. This fellow said, human is without sin by birth. It means, recently born baby does not have any sin. According to his doctrine, the origin of human character is good and holy. He started to teach this doctrine in the early churches by that teaching Augustine. 354 to 430 AD became very upset. Number 3. Apollinarianism. This doctrine was developed by a scholar Apollinarius. According to his doctrine, Jesus was a human and he had human body, but his soul and mind was divine. His doctrine denies the deity and humanity of Jesus Christ. Dear friends, so these three heresy teachings had badly attacked early five churches. Especially, the Roman church had great problem with those heresy teachings. Roman Emperor Constantine gathered all the Bible scholars to research about this matter of heresy teachings and to find out the right doctrine. After that time, for about 100 years, Roman church addressed four worldwide councils to solve the problems of heresy teachings. So dear friends, this much I'd like to share with you about the 2nd and 3rd century heresy teachings and 4th century heresy teachings. And in coming days, I'll be sharing with you about four ecumenical councils. Council of Nicaea, Council of Constantinople, Council of Ephesus, Council of Chalcedon. Another our study of Christology. So thank you for being with us till now in our program. And I hope you are encouraged by listening about the study of Christ Jesus.